Welcome back, everyone, to the Bears Forever Plays YouTube channel. Today is Saturday, November 2nd. We have a ton of games to break down for this Saturday afternoon slate. We've got a lot of great matchups that we're going to be looking at. We have nine game picks, three player props for today's slate. We have a couple top 25 matchups and a must watch game with Ohio State going up against Penn State. Before we break down that action, let's take a look at the Friday night recap. Currently, is halftime between Boise State and San Diego State, 35 10 as the score. So they got a 25 point lead. Uh, Boise State minus 23 and a half was the play. Ashton Genty over 188.5 rushing yards. I think he has 40. He is getting bottled up and uh, he's getting beaten up in this game. So I don't think that's going to happen unless he breaks off a couple big ones. But Marquez Cooper on his way to 81 and a half ripped off a 42 yard uh, run in this game already has 60 plus yards and a touchdown already. So looking like a two and one day, perhaps uh, if Boise State can hang on if Marquez Cooper can get over the 81 and a half rushing yards there. But let's take a look at the leaderboard. We had a one and two day the other night. Hopefully we can get on the winning side of things on Friday night, but we got a ton of games to look at for Saturday. And we're going to start with the big games. I guess I can call them that the four best games of the day. I think we're going to be looking at Ohio state going up against Penn state. This is going to be a big time matchup, not just for playoffs, but for the big 10 title game. I would say that Ohio state is the more desperate team. They already have a loss Penn state coming into this game undefeated. I do think Ohio state is going to find a way to win. We have two head coaches that have been brutally bad going up against top 10 opponents, top five opponents in their times at their schools over the last several years. Feels like Penn State every single year in the big time games, they fall short. Ohio State has had their own problems against top five teams. And of course, their problems going up against Michigan over the last couple of years. But that probably won't be a problem this year because Michigan stinks. I don't think either one of these teams will be able to produce a lot of points because both of these teams have been really good defensively they're both top 10 in the nation on the defensive side i'm just going to take the more desperate team to win the game i am going to take the free points though because neither one of these sides should be favored by three or more i'm going to take the plus three with penn state i don't see three points of separation between these teams the only thing that could possibly make me change my pick is if drew aller is out in this game which he is questionable for penn state i think it's very unlikely that he misses this game because it's such a massive game but if he does miss the game i will be changing my play to ohio state minus three but for right now, though, both of these teams, they're going to lean on that defense. I don't think either one of them hold a three-point advantage. Give me Penn State plus three if Drew Aller does play. Ohio State minus the points if he's ruled out on Saturday. Uh, let's go to the next play. We're going to be looking at the Big 12. And this is a big-ish game, I guess I can say. Texas Tech, not really competitive this season in the Big 12, having back-to-back -back losses. But I like Iowa State here. Minus 13.5 to play. I just don't see... Any way that this spread should be 13.5. Iowa State should be favored by 21 plus points. Take a look at the stats on the screen. Texas Tech, they are able to move the ball up and down the field and score a lot of points per game, but that's what happens with the Big 12. There's not a whole lot of great defenses in the Big 12. Iowa State not only plays fantastic defense, they're top 20 in the nation. They're also a very good uh, team at moving the ball down the field, which we typically don't see out of this program. They're going to be able to march up and down the field against Texas Tech. They're giving up 30 plus points per game and they're not going to be able to stop Iowa State whatsoever. This is one of the best coach teams in the nation as well. They love to force turnovers. They're averaging 1.3 turnovers per game. That's also top 10 in the nation. They fly around defensively. They don't make many mistakes. They don't have any penalties. They don't shoot themselves in the foot and they just play all around great football. And that is why they are one of the best teams in the Big 12 conference this season. I'm taking them minus 13.5 against Texas Tech as the play. Uh, for the next play, I have to decide whether or not Georgia is still Georgia because they're going up against Florida. They have looked good over the last couple of games. This team only shows up, though, whenever people rule them out. And I think everybody has Georgia back in as one of the top teams in the nation, maybe the top team in the nation. So that means they're probably going to be a little bit conservative in this game. This is a big time rivalry. I'm not big on the uh, Florida aspect this either because Billy Boy should not have a job. I don't know how he still has a job with Florida. I do think they're going to be competitive in this game, and I'm hoping that Georgia doesn't jump out early because if that happens, Florida might just lay down and die with the coaching that they have right now. But I'm going to take the points in this one, plus 14.5. I could be sold on minus 13.5. Just feels like a couple touchdown kind of day for Georgia to win. So I'm going to bite the cheese here, take the hook of 14.5. Florida has been bad this season. They haven't been terrible, though. They're a decent team. They can give Georgia a run for their money because this is a rivalry game. Most likely going to have their best foot forward in this game. Give me the points. I'll plug my nose here as the play plus 14.5. And finally, we're looking at another massive contest. Pittsburgh going up against SMU. The winner of this game furthers their chance to make the playoffs. The loser of this game might not have any shot to make the playoffs because whoever wins this game will most likely have a shot at the ACC title. Pittsburgh is coming into this game undefeated. SMU is coming into this game with one loss on the season, which came very early in the year. 
Currently, they're on a five-game winning streak. The line, it favors SMU by seven points. There's no way. There is no way I can lay that number with SMU. I think they're very good, but Pittsburgh's also very good. They have their quarterback, Eli Holstein. He's banged up with an undisclosed injury, but it does say he's probable to play in this game. So with him on the field, I've got no problem taking the seven points with Pittsburgh. I don't think this is going to be a seven-point game. This one feels like a field goal kind of game. Pittsburgh just beat the brakes off a pretty good Syracuse team in their last game. Not one, not two, three pick sixes going up against Kyle McCord. The defense, they were flying around last week. The offense has been consistent all season long. Both these teams are neck and neck, and I have to assume that the line is sitting at 7.5 because maybe they think the starting quarterback for Pitt's not going to play in this game. But I did read he's probable. Everything's pointing to him playing in this one. Give me the points. This should be a great game. Pittsburgh plus 7.5 is the play. Uh, let's go over to some player props before I break down some more graphic plays. Let's go to Kyle McCord. Over 306.5 passing yards against Virginia Tech. I don't care what anybody says about Kyle McCord, and I know what he had last week. Five interceptions in that game. Three of them went back for touchdowns, but two or three of those really weren't his fault. I'm not trying to make excuses for this guy, but what I know about Syracuse is that they're going to try to throw the ball 50-plus times every single game. That's not going to be any different going up against Virginia Tech. This is the lowest line of the season for Kyle McCord, and for good reason, because Virginia Tech, they have been decent at stopping opposing teams. They've got a pretty good defense over there. Last week, Kyle McCourty threw the ball 64 times, and we've got to take volume like that. I'm never not going to take McCord if he's throwing 64 times in a game. You can say to yourself that he only had 64 attempts because they were down the entire game, but go ahead and look at the game logs, guys. He throws an average of 50 times per game basically every single game. He's going to throw 50-plus times in this game. Syracuse in a sleepy spot on a Saturday afternoon against Virginia Tech right in the middle of the day. This game's going to be weird. I think Syracuse can give them a run for their money as well. Kyle McCord, have yourself a day. Over 306.5 passing yards as the play. For the next play, we're going to be looking at Jonah Coleman of Washington to go over 84.5 rushing yards going up against the Trojans. I don't know if you guys are able to watch Washington last week, but Jonah Coleman might be the best player on this team. They can't really afford to trust Rodgers throwing the ball down the field. Washington has been potentially the worst team all season long at shooting themselves in the foot because they turn the ball over at the worst times. They have a lot of penalties per game, and they don't have an operational field goal team. They miss more field goals than they make. They muff more field goals than they kick, I feel like. Washington, though, they operate best whenever they give Jonah Coleman the ball, and they gave him the ball a ton last week. They've been giving him the ball a ton over the last couple weeks. This is a game that I'm going to be breaking down a little bit because USC on the ground, they have been a little bit vulnerable, giving up 136 yards per game, and I do think Washington up front can potentially win that battle. This is a high-motor player. He's very physical, and he can break off a couple big runs. This is the big guy as well. He's going to run after the contact. This is too low of a number. Jonah Coleman giving him here over 84.5 rushing yards. I think he's going to break 100 yards again this week. Did it last week. Let's go over to the last play of the day for the final player prop. Pittsburgh and SMU give me Brashard Smith over 83.5 rushing yards going up against Pitt. Pittsburgh defensively this season, they have been very good at stopping the run. They're giving up less than 100 yards per game. But I don't think that's going to matter in this one for SMU. They might be able to win the battle 75, even 80% of the time up front. But all it takes is one play for Smith to go over this number of 83.5 rushing yards. He's most likely going to have himself a 60-plus yard touchdown in this game. He has been working extra hard over the last five weeks for SMU. He's had 13-plus carries in five of the last six games that he's been in, going over 115-plus rushing yards in three of the last five games. And the last game against Duke, he had the best game of the season, 26 touches, 117 yards, two rushing touchdowns. He has been able to rip off a lot of long runs this season. I think he's going to be the feature player for SMU offensively again. Give me his over, 83.5 rushing. I think both the rushing props that I gave out, both running backs, I think they both go over 100-plus rushing yards. So I love their plays here, over 83.5 for Smith as the last uh, player prop. Let's go take a look at the recap graphic. We have five more plays to break down. I always break down the four biggest plays that I think of the day, and then these ones I put at least a unit on. These are what I like to call the money makers. These are the plays that I look at that maybe aren't the biggest games, but I think have the most value. Not going to be very chatty about these games, couple lines each, but we're going to start Navy going up against Rice. Rice is a very bad team this season. They can't stop the run. They can't stop the pass. They are a very bad defensive team, and Navy's coming off of that ass kicking against Notre Dame last week. They gave up 50-plus points, not being very effective offensively. Notre Dame just played extremely well. I think Navy's a very good team. They've got great quarterback play. They're going to run the hell of the ball here against Rice. Give me them minus 11 as the play. I think they win by 25+. plus. Next play, USC going up against Washington. I'm going to take USC on the money line because last week they didn't give up. This team could have easily given up last week going up against Rutgers, but they didn't. They have lost three of the last four games by brutal fashion. 
I took a chance on him last week to cover the spread against Rutgers and Miller Moss. He showed up. The defense, they showed up. Washington, they've always, always, always shot themselves in the foot in these kind of games. I do think they're going to be able to run the ball a little bit going up against USC, but at the end of the day, Washington, no special team play. They make big mistakes. Miller Moss and company, best quarterback on the field. I think the Trojans find a way to win this game outright. Give me the money line. For the next play, big, big game here. South Carolina going up against Texas A&M. Could potentially have been one of the biggest four uh, games on the slate today, but I decided to go away from it. Texas A&M coming off of a massive win going up against LSU. This line should be a touchdown plus for Texas A&M, but it's currently sitting at plus three. South Carolina at home is the play, plus three. They probably win this game on the money line. And the only reason I'm saying that's because that's just been the history of college football. There are trap spots. There are not trap spots. This is an absolute trap spot for Texas A&M coming off of a massive win. South Carolina not considered that good of a team, but they are very good defensively. They're very good up front. Probably the best front five in college football at getting to the quarterback. They're going to get pressure on Texas A&M. Not sure which one of the quarterbacks is going to be out there. Wegman, he can throw the ball. The other one can run the ball. But whoever they decide to go with, South Carolina, pin your ears back, get some pressure, get some turnovers. I'll take the points. Historically, they've been great at home at night in the SEC. So give me South Carolina. Next play, Kentucky going up against Tennessee. This is a tough one because I, like everybody else who has social media, sees Tennessee drop the uniforms and they use Venom to do that. Yeah, it looked extremely cool. Usually I would be like, yeah, sure, you can gamble on the uniform look or the helmet look. Probably not the smartest thing to do, uh, but I've seen dumber ways to lose money. Tennessee, they did come out with that video. Extremely cool. Are the uniforms worth 17 points against Kentucky in a rivalry matchup? No. Unless Tennessee gets a new quarterback, new running back, new play calling, new wide receivers. Actually, I'll strike the running back. Samson's been really good this season. Nico hasn't been there yet this season. Uh, they've got some horrible play calling so far. The Volunteers, they've been struggling to move the ball. They had one good half against Alabama in the second half, and they really didn't look great against Alabama in the second half. Alabama just looked really bad against that Tennessee defense. Tennessee defense is amazing. Kentucky, give me seven points. I, I think seven to 20 can be the final score in this game. Uh, 17.5 points with the Kentucky. I, I just don't see any way Tennessee blows them out. Finally, Old Dominion going up against App State. And App State this season has been absolutely horrific defensively. Old Dominion, I know a lot of people don't watch them. I mean, I've only watched them a couple of times, but I have seen them in back-to-back weeks now. They're coming off a monster win against uh, Georgia Southern. They've now won three consecutive games going up against Georgia State, Texas State, and Georgia Southern. And they were the underdog in all those games, winning each of those games by seven-plus points. This is a very hot Old Dominion team right now. They're scoring a lot of points, 24-plus points in four of the last five games, 47 last week against Georgia Southern in a route. They are finally the favorite for the first time, I believe, all year besides one game against East Carolina. They're playing some really good football. I'm going to take them minus 2.5. I think they can kill App State in this game. Uh, let's go over to the full recap now. Penn State with the points against Ohio State. Iowa State minus 13.5 against Texas Tech. Florida with the points against Georgia. Pitt with the points against SMU. Navy minus 11 against Rice. They beat them by 25 plus points. USC money line against Washington. South Carolina plus three against AM. I don't want to, I kind of want to sprinkle the money line on that one as well. At your own risk, money line, South Carolina. Kentucky plus 17 and a half at the points. Don't see Tennessee blowing them out. And then Old Dominion minus 2.5 going up against Ad State. We've got Colin McCord over 306.5 passing yards against Virginia Tech. Jonah Coleman over 84.5 rushing against USC. And then Brashard Smith, over 83.5 rushing against Pitt. I think both those running backs go for 100-plus. So if you're looking for a player prop, 100-plus yards, put them both in there. Guys, that's going to do it for the NCAA Football Plays and Props for Saturday, November 2nd, Slated Games. If you guys enjoyed the content, please be sure to drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel below. See you guys next video, and thanks for watching.